This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote. And today's quote is, what if we train them and they leave? What if we don't and they stay? That is from Adrian Miller. With us today in the studio, we have someone from Northern Virginia Community College who specializes in training staff. Her name is Janet Clark. Hello, Janet. Hello, Basil. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me in. Very good. I hope we're going to find something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do. Okay, good. Now, your area is workforce development. Correct. Tell us how important that is. I almost can't put a measure of the importance on how important that is. Mm -hmm. the business industry is really hurting right now for finding the number of skilled workforce candidates that they need for the positions that they have open. And, and we all know that the Northern Virginia region is a, a favored region mm -hmm. for employment um, and for population as well, um, in addition to the number of candidates that are available. Mm -hmm. The problem is jobs are getting posted, number of applications are coming in, could be hundreds for a particular position, sure. but they're not embodying the skills that the industry is looking for. Okay, I have a question. How did that come about? Who, okay, let's not blame. Uh, let's get back to that. Who is, how did that come about? Well, I think there's a number of factors. Mm -hmm. I think it partly has come about because of the advancement of technology, which now pretty much canvases cross-sector mm -hmm. um, all the industries. Mm -hmm. It really does. So, you know, we have moved at a very rapid pace in the internet arena. Mm -hmm. uh, internet security mm -hmm. has become a, a big um, evolving, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely domain, evolving area mm -hmm. as uh, businesses have done more and more on the internet, mm -hmm. and they need to. Mm -hmm. So now we have a society centered around that, absolutely. and we've not put the, the skills and the training in place for our um, students mm -hmm. that are coming out of their high school uh, education to be prepared to work in every industry that now has needs to support that and our our college education as well does not require that as a core component all of that is still elective for people to choose to go into oh, really? so that's just one area mm -hmm. um, the industrial work areas, so mm -hmm. let's say oil and gas, for example, um, infrastructure, because our areas, the region is growing, the nation is growing, and those industrial, former, primarily labor mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. now also have technological components to them, mm -hmm. which require skill sets, mm -hmm. which we don't have embodied mm -hmm. in our standard educational realm. Gotcha. So that's why, um, we have the Workforce Development, the, the Northern Virginia Community College Workforce Development Division. And actually, that is being done across the nation through community colleges mm -hmm. and other post-secondary institutions. Okay. But the deficit in our region is so great, it's almost unsurmountable. I mean, we really have to come together in order to, to address getting our workforce skills that industry is looking for. Um, 
sooner rather than later. There are a lot of, lot, of, lot of people trying to do that, a lot of groups working on that, and there's state support. Uh, federally, it's recognized. General Alexander um, has made comments most recently, even at Telecommunications Information Association conference a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. regarding cybersecurity mm -hmm. and the skilled workforce. We have all these veterans that are coming out of the military, mm -hmm. and there's tremendous opportunity to help retrain them or to, to provide them additional skills and, mm -hmm. and get them in the workplace. So I, I hope that addresses some of the, the level of your question in terms of the, the need. Sure, it, it does. So what is the solution of your program in workforce development? How are you going about it to help solve that problem? Well, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. um, it's multifaceted. You know, Northern Virginia Community College in particular covers this entire region. We have six campuses and almost 80,000 students. Oh. And at each of those campuses, we offer workforce development programs. Um, but in particular, my group that I'm working with within the Workforce Development Division mm -hmm. goes into the private and public sector and offers these contract training um, solutions, certification programs, testing assessments on site. Mm -hmm. So we can bring it into industry, we can bring it into companies, we can bring instructors into companies or um, other organizations, educational institutions, and into the federal government. And we're, we're actually doing that in a big way. There's a huge demand for that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think some things are cyclic. Years ago, when the technology industry first really kicked off mm -hmm. in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies had in-house training programs. And then as time went on, those training programs went away because the personnel that they had to retain um, got to be too much and businesses had to cut back for profit margins and for a number of reasons, industry uh, was changing. And there for a while, there was enough of a, a skilled workforce but then things changed and technology leapt ahead again, but then these training programs uh, are not naturally in these uh, organizations. Okay. Would you say that also, I, so then you, what you bring to the table is the fact that you take the training to the organization. Yes. They don't have to come to the Northern Virginia Community College to get it. Yes. And it's not necessarily a matter of a specific certificate they have to achieve along with this, that, the other thing. It's much more specialized, like uh, in the specific area they need help. Yes, to all of your, your um, comments there, Basile. I will say we do some things that are industry standard in terms of providing training for industry licensure. Mm -hmm. um, industry certifications. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the Cisco certifications, we have preparation classes for that. Uh, project management, PMP programs. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the medical side, we, we have licensure uh, programs for that. The educational programs, Career Switcher, if you're familiar with that teaching program, mm -hmm. we have that program through our workforce development. Uh, the hospitality arena, food service, mm -hmm. So, but yes, one of the key uh, components that you mentioned that I'd, I'd like to highlight is the fact that we can bring these training programs mm -hmm. on site wherever it's needed. And we're doing that in, in a number of federal agencies and, and private organizations right now. Okay. Very good. Now, how do you, we've known you for quite some years. Yes. How do you get to that and how you parlay everything that you learn to, to this position now? Well, that's a, a good question. Um, you know, I started in the technology industry in the early 80s, and that's how I'm able to speak to it. Mm -hmm. And I worked in that industry for almost 15 years, okay. selling technology services, uh, primarily data and voice services, to the federal government. Mm -hmm. Then I spent 11 years in education. Okay. I went back to school, mm -hmm. earned my master's in education. Mm -hmm and uh, became licensed to teach business and marketing. Okay. And of course, you and I met mm -hmm. through um, the educational realm. That's right. And then I stepped out of that and ran for public office, mm -hmm. became elected, and for the past two years was settling into that position. Mm -hmm. I still have two more years on that term, as you know. And uh, then 
was ready to go back to work to my day job. Mm -hmm. This position opened up and it just, the, the synergy there, in my opinion, mm -hmm. with respect to my experience where I've been, uh, my desire to help the community mm -hmm. and um, the continued education uh, component that I'm, I'm such a, a supporter of, just, it, it just all fit. Mm -hmm. And so I happened into to this position and I'm, I'm thrilled to have it. Okay. And I'm, I'm hopeful to make an impact, a positive impact for our, our region and for the business sector. Mm -hmm. It's a big econ economic development component for the entire region, whether or not we can meet the workforce need or not. How many other college around that are doing what you do? Is there any other aside the Northern Virginia Community College? How many people are... How many other colleges have a workforce development and doing, trying to fill up the vacuum you're talking about? If that's, you know? that's a good question. Mm -hmm. All of them that I'm aware of have some sort of a training component. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of to, to what extent they're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's called uh, professional education in some post-secondary mm -hmm. gotcha. institutions. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the community college uh, workforce development component goes, it flows down from the Virginia Community College system mm -hmm. at the state level. Gotcha. So it's uh, also in Maryland um, throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the nation's growing, as you well know, mm -hmm. in a big way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not unique in, in the needs that we have for the skilled workforce because, as I said, it's really somewhat a societal issue mm -hmm. with the, the technology and, and how fast we've advanced. Mm -hmm. It's just that in our area, in this region, mm -hmm. it's more pronounced because we have so much high tech. We're really Silicon Valley of the mm -hmm. East. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so much government. Mm -hmm. And that's right. uh, so that's... We have high employment. I mean, our unemployment rate is, um, depending on which area of the region you get, ranges from four to six percent. Mm -hmm. Compared is, to the rest of the the, the country, nation. which is uh, much higher. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. My next question to you is: What is your biggest personal challenge? What would you consider the biggest personal challenge? Time. Time. Okay. Don't you experience that? <laughs> I think we had that discussion earlier. <laughs> well, I didn't know that was the biggest, but that's what I'm asking. I'm just asking a question. And what is your biggest success? What would you consider your biggest success? Thus far in life mm -hmm. or with this Thus particular far in life. position? Thus far in life. The biggest success in life. Um, boy, that's a weighty question, Basile. Biggest success in life. Um, is, is, a, is a personal success mm -hmm. in terms of rela related to uh, my personal life and, mm -hmm. and my, my children. Mm -hmm. And just, um, to me, I feel like I've, I've been successful in at least getting them through high school mm -hmm. and now they're in college. Okay. And uh, two in college, and that's you know anyone who's a parent I think could say that there's a tremendous feeling of success <laughs> to be able to get that far. Gotcha. Um, but in terms of professional achievement okay. mm -hmm. and success in, in that arena, uh, I feel like what I'm doing now is has to be, I think, one of the biggest uh, success. Uh, levels that I've achieved mm -hmm. and it doesn't it's not you're a talking about the workforce or your elected official position I'm talking about um, working with to, in the workforce okay. the elected official position also I'm serving the community mm -hmm. and I feel like that's a success but you know when you're working in government or you're working with government and and there it's um, it's very different there's mm -hmm. a whole different set of, of challenges mm -hmm. uh, your ability to be successful is limited by the bureaucracy gotcha. of the structure. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like I can really make a difference. I feel like I've made a difference and I'm making a difference in my elected official capacity, mm -hmm. but I feel like I can make m even more of a difference on the workforce development side of things. Could it be that the success in the workforce development is more something you can much more easily control? Yes. That's, that's you, you are right on there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
And it's fundamental. Yes. Fundamental. It's a real need mm -hmm. that many people recognize and want to help mm -hmm. solve. So I think that's why I'm going to be more successful or be able to be the most successful in that arena mm -hmm. is because people will rally around a problem to try to solve it. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could do this myself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, um, Dr. Templin, for example, at Northern Virginia Community College, mm -hmm. the, the president has done so much in this realm. I'm just one, one little component of this whole picture. Mm -hmm. But um, it's exciting to be able to, to be involved in an institution and with a program that, that can make a difference in that way. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, providing the skill sets to people that are going to help to get them employed or to retain employment or to regress them along is uh, adding to the quality of life mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. and then the businesses. So it's a whole system. Gotcha. And Northern Virginia Community College is the second largest community college in the country? It is. It's the largest in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So which means that you'll have that much more impact then? Uh, I, I would hope so. I, I think that we can, absolutely. I think we have the, the structure in place to be able to, to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be logical. It's very, very valuable, very important. I know that firsthand because, as I mentioned, I taught French at Northern Virginia Community College. Yes, uh, you did. <laughs> I could really see the student when they come in and then who they are after the class is over. And, and how that, did that make you feel? Oh, of course, I went into it for that. No, it's definitely, you, add, you feel you're adding value to them, you're helping them improve their lives, you're broadening their horizon, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same way happened in other fields. It's, uh, there is a cycle which is a be, do, have, in the sense that if you want to have, a, to give an example, if you want to have a cake, you learn the recipe, mm -hmm. that's B. Mm -hmm. You do, you apply whatever is there, and then you'll have your cake. Same thing in the workforce in the world today, we need people being able to produce. Yes. You start with training them to mm -hmm. be able to use for them in the end then to, 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 to produce the, the, the product we're talking about, mm -hmm. or the offer, the services that, that, that we're discussing. Mm -hmm. So the entrance point is education and they're learning the skills. And as you mentioned, the world has changed dramatically. It has changed dramatically. Can I give you uh, an anecdotal uh, example of, sure. of situation? So a few weeks ago, I was attending a, a major systems integrator event where they were hosting some high school students and college students mm -hmm. uh, to talk to them about potential internships okay. and possible employment there. One of the uh, sets of comments that was made to them was prefaced by telling the students, this gentleman said, well, you're not going to like hearing what I have to say. But if you think your college degree is going to get you an internship or employment here, that's not the case. This is a large systems integrator mm -hmm. providing um, services in a, in a big way to the federal government. Um, and that also many of their uh, contracts uh, require uh, skilled personnel. Mm -hmm. So they said, if I, we have two candidates come in here and one of you has uh, skills certifications and C, uh, CISSP or um, you know, Cisco certifications in, in, uh, in different areas, uh, and or uh, foreign language ability, Arabic, Chinese, Russian, so on and so forth. And then there's another candidate who has a bachelor's in business administration. We're going to take the guy who does not have the degree but has the certifications and the skills because that's what we need. Mm -hmm. And we bring on 200 to 300 interns every year. The other thing that they said was, when you come in to apply for these jobs, we'll be expecting you to demonstrate your skills. And let me give you an example of what that means. Mm -hmm. So I think that message is really important to get out. Um, 
college degrees are extremely important, mm -hmm. particularly in this region, highly competitive. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can only go so far without a college degree. But what the business industry is saying and what the government is saying is, we need skilled workers right now. So guys, get these skills and then also work on your college education. Gotcha. So what is the handling? When they come then to join the Northern Virginia Community College, they should be signing up for those specific skills you're talking about and doing the regular curriculum? That would be my recommendation. That's what business industry is saying. Okay. That's assuming that those programs exist. <laughs> Well, they, they pretty much, the programs I mean, do exist. But, I mean, for the, I'm talking about a guy coming from a high school. I don't think that what you offer is being offered at high school, is it? Well, very good point. Some high schools are offering some of those, but for the most part, they're not. But what is what does exist mm -hmm. is uh, dual enrollment. So okay. students, high school students mm -hmm. who are 16 years of age mm -hmm. can also enroll at Northern Virginia Community College. Oh, I see, And I they see. could, they could take certification classes or any other skills classes mm -hmm. while they're also getting their um, high school diploma. But you're right, it's not part of the, the high school standard curriculum. Now, there are uh, some of these, some of the high schools are now uh, incorporating some of those classes as electives, but it's okay. not part of the, the, the core curriculum. But there needs to be some coordination though, because if uh, <laughs> the, the system integral, the, the, the other company is saying, whatever is study of is not enough, but it needs to be coordinated so that the information is there, so that the guy does not just come with black and say, so you're knocking on the wrong door. You are right on with what you're saying. And there's a lot of that coordination going on right now. Okay. So there's uh, partnerships. We have a systemic solutions uh, partnership that was formed with the Northern Virginia Technology Council, for example, mm -hmm. and that involves K through 12 education oh, really? throughout okay. the region. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole nother 15, 20 minutes to talk about. So we can, we can talk about that some other time. Mm -hmm. So there are efforts being made in that front and that okay. sort of thing's occurring across the, the nation. So we're at the forefront of trying to break through gotcha. this workforce skills deficit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But right now with the, the um, baby boomer population and the bubble, the retirements, the attrition, coupled with the um, lack of skills that are in demand in industry not being produced, mm -hmm. there's a projection of hundreds of thousands of jobs not being able to be filled within the next 20 years unless something changes. So um, with all these other things going on though, I, mm -hmm. I do have hope uh, because everyone recognizes this issue. Do this you see anybody here on that happening? Because you say you do have hope, do you, do you, don't, you don't see that they're going to be they're not going to be done, they're not going to implement them? Right oh no, I do have hope. Mm -hmm. No, I, I say I do have hope. I, mm -hmm. hope that, I have hope that we're going to uh, make progress with all the efforts that are coming together. Okay. To catch up, to be able to fill the 100,000 jobs. Yes, okay. I think it's always going to be a challenge, Bazil. Sure, absolutely. I, I think um, I can tell you in the veteran arena that the federal government, um, Department of Labor, folks are working to work with our veterans to convert their experience mm -hmm. to uh, credits and to skills that can transfer into the workplace and to, to train them in some of these high need areas. Okay. So um, as soon as they get that program in place, which they've, they've started to do, but once they get it in place in a more systemic way, mm -hmm that's going to help. And so there's a lot of components that are aligning, but you're absolutely right when you say that we need to work together and we particularly need to work together with the K through, K through 12 mm -hmm. um, educational arena mm -hmm. because to me the core curriculum mm -hmm. that they're being taught mm -hmm. in schools now doesn't embody all of what they need. So we have kids that are learning more at home in the technology arena than they're learning in school, mm -hmm. in the technology arena. Mm -hmm. They are just by nature uh, technologically savvy, savvy mm -hmm. yes, and uh, computer literate uh, generation. 
How can they, 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 that's a very good and interesting point also because knowing that, I guess, what the, 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 the company should do is check them out because they may not necessarily have a certificate or certification, right. but they may have the know-how. They know how to, to, is this, you get what I'm saying? I do hear what you're saying. So some sort of testing to see if they have the ability without mm -hmm. having the certification. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, there are some companies that are doing that in a small way, but I, I do think that you're onto something in that they're going to have to look at that more so. Um, there is uh, testing that can be taken. There's ways around taking all the preparatory classes mm -hmm. for certifications. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a student or an adult that would have the ability or the, the acumen mm -hmm. to be able to pass one of those exams mm -hmm. could just go take the exam. Mm -hmm. And, and get the certification. Mm -hmm. But you, it, it saves the company time and money if a candidate comes in with a piece of paper that says they're certified mm -hmm. and it proves, so that that proves that they've been oh, certified versus because having to get they all, Yeah, home. it's also, yeah, I guess it needs, it needs to be, somebody needs to get down there and work it out because uh, certification, you know, but then the other guy said, you know what, I know it all. <laughs> but you can't check them necessarily right. and so that you don't wind up the guy in the house. Just like I say, if we don't train them, what if we turn them, we turn them to leave. Next thing you know, he's in, but it's not trained, but we missed him. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> Uh, that, that's a nice challenge. My question to you, I'm going to have to review that. How much is the government involved in this? How much is the commitment involved? The government in? involved in, so is it that they involve the government in sorting that? Oh, involving the, the government? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, in okay. a big way, Brazil. I mean, from federal to, to state to local government, it's pretty much every everybody is involved in this. Okay, makes um, sense. It's pretty amazing in terms of, I've looked at uh, some, or seen some documentation recently that has shown work that uh, an independent organization, a consultant organization did on the workforce development efforts mm -hmm. in the area. And it's a sheet of paper that spans this, this length between here and there showing all of these organizations and flowcharts because there there are so many engines moving on okay. this. Folks, that's all we're going to cover today. This is definitely an interesting conversation. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we're looking to see you again here next time. We'll do another show. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com.